everybody, Mega Ruler 31 back here for FSI DFS. We are in day 156 of Major League Baseball, so thanks for still watching and tuning in and playing. And I've always said this is a good opportunity to make some uh, money in the sport because uh, I know the contests will start to get a little smaller now with football and play here, but people's attention tend to go off it and there's less, um, you know, sometimes there's some more overlay and stuff, especially on the first Sunday of football. So just check it out and, you know, maybe you can get into some, some contests that aren't completely full. It gives you a better chance to win, especially in like 50-50s, things like that, um, double ups. And then I always say like, you know, sometimes you got some new um, – blood come in for football they win a little bit of money they get a taste for it they want to try baseball the next day so monday has always been a very profitable day after the first sunday of football because a lot of new people are in and um you know if they haven't sadly found videos like this to help them out then you know sometimes they struggle and it's an opportunity to make some money there so we have a it's scheduled a nine games late it's kind of weird because it looks like kansas city uh, game um it says like Detroit was postponed, but it looks like they moved up to 410 just due to weather. So the players are on the slate. DraftKings, I think, has them all in red. FanDuel does not. So be very, very careful there. But don't play anybody from Detroit or um, Kansas City on the slate because their um, statistics will not count. Hopefully FanDuel gets in there and ed edits it um, later on this today before um, lock and we have to like 705 tonight. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. So uh, decent slate, uh, limited pitching options, um, some really good hitting options. So we, of course, field again last night. That turned into an absolute slugfest. Colorado got out like way far ahead. Arizona caught up. It was like 10-10 in extra innings, I think. I didn't see what the, the final score was, but um, we saw a lot of runs so, um, scored in that game. So definitely a um, similar matchup with weaker pitchers there today. So I think they definitely will um, lead our offensive category. So it's all about finding like an SP2 today. That's been like the hardest um, part of like builds. And when I get into that section, like we'll go over like the options because the there's really no value. And I might use the same SP2 for cash and GPP and we'll get to that um when we get there. So actually the Rockies won 13 to 10. It looks like a football score more than a baseball score. Okay. So let's start out with the Blue Jays and the Rangers. You have Gossman and Colo Arethia. Um, I'm not interested in Arethia. Just looking at what's gone on recently with um, him. I just think against this Toronto lineup, that's just a very, very powerful. I'm not um, trusting a young pitcher here. I mean, it's got the split advantage versus most of the team, but still it scares me a little bit, <clears throat> actually a lot. So that's why he's um, on my fade list here. Gossman, I think he's going to be my top pitcher on the slate here. I know we have like Otani and, and Free, but they're in tougher matchups against like Houston and against Seattle. So Gossman, I, I know he's had some struggles this season. And at one point we thought, like, is there something wrong with him? Is he is he kind of broken? But I think against Texas here, who really hasn't uh, put up a ton of runs recently, I mean, they've got a good lineup with, like, a lot of potential in it. So, but I think like, Gossman, I'm just going to lock in my SP1 just at 9-7 here. It's, it's a good um, value. And again, there, there's a couple other options in, in the build. I left some extra money on the table in the build. So if you want to go up to one of the higher price pitchers, that, that's perfectly fine. It's your discretion. Uh, Toronto Bats, I, I think they're maybe my fourth favorite stack. They're just so expensive to try to put together here. And I said, like, trying to get them in pitching in the same thing and get, like, a full five-man stack is just, like, super, super hard because there's really no value. Like, it doesn't even look like Biggio is going to be – in the lineup and he's been hitting really well like so i mean you could drop down with like jackie bradley at like ninth and do like a wraparound thing i'm okay with that um so it does give you some exposure with some guy that a guy that can get on base and like maybe steal base or something and make decent value there texas not super interested josh young jung here at third base like he had a home run in his um debut last night if he's back in the lineup um you know, potentially he could be a 2K, you know, even if he gets you a zero, that's better than a 5K guy getting you a zero. So uh, that's always my theory there. So, you know, he's 
there's a couple scenarios where I might throw him in at um, third base in a stack where I just need a one off and he's a, a cheap um, play um, on both sites and uh, just opens up a lot for you to um, get some of the bats in that you want. Angels and Houston, Otani and your quietie. Uh, Otani definitely has been um, decent pitching again this year. Houston is always a tough matchup because they don't really strike out a lot, but uh, like they haven't done, they haven't been super dominant recently, but at any point they can turn out just like Toronto, like Los Angeles Dodgers, um, Atlanta Braves. There's just these offenses that are just have so many good players that just, if it clicks, then, you know, goodbye pitcher. So, but Otani, I think, has enough control on everything that he should have a decent outing. But it's just so hard at 10-6 against a good lineup that there might not be strikeouts there just to justify playing him in cash. So I, I think he's a good option. I don't think he's like a super safe, rock-solid option. Equity on the other side, reverse splits pitcher. He actually had a really good outing recently um, in his last game against them. I think he had like six uh, strikeouts. It was, it was a pretty good... Uh, uh, outing for him there against the same team so you know sometimes that kind of scares you off just because like he they just saw him you know what's um what's gonna happen but at 9k he's definitely in price so he had 32.8 FanDuel points it was on the road and he had eight k's there so zero runs he only allowed four hits and in seven innings so definitely a good outing there but I do think that there's going to be some regression here. I think people might, if they box score Chase, uh, will play him. So I, I think he's at the top of the medium range here and definitely in play. But Trout has hit home runs, I think, four or five straight games. So he's actually on, on fire here. And there's a lot of righties in this lineup. Again, he's a reverse splits guy that I think can get on base. Um, so I don't think he's going to get out of it with seven innings, nine strikeouts, and zero runs again. I think he's going to give up probably a home run to Trout and like maybe a couple other runs here. So um, I do like the Angels definitely as a as a cheap GPP stack. And you say, well, like, why cheap? Because Trout is the only one that's like really high priced here at 5'8". You can't play Otani because he's pitching. And everybody else is like 3'5 or less besides Refringo, who's like 4'2". But um fastest if he's there if because dassey is still banged up um he's only like two five and he's actually been in good form recently and then if you look at um stassi if he's in he usually is uh good hitting lefties and would your cardi's reverse splits i think that he's definitely in play also so like otani like your quality a little bit less in the middle medium range. I think both pitchers are in play angels definitely is a stack. And then Houston would definitely be a leverage stack against Otani. <clears throat> Again, I'm still avoiding L2 V at five, eight, just way too high priced and just really hasn't um, done much recently. It's just kind of uh, struggled at the plate, but I said at like any point he could turn it on and actually have um, a good night. Let's see what he did last night. Yep. Nothing. Um, 0 for 4 at bat. So, I mean, he's had a couple games in the, in the 20s. There's been have horrible, but he's kind of becoming like Vlad in my um, Toronto stacks, like just such a high price in, for a boom, boomer bust player that um, I'd rather pay up um, or like get more like people in the stack than actually pay up for like somebody that's almost 6k there unless they're in a super smash spot cincinnati and milwaukee chase anderson and adrian hauser i'm uh, not interested in chase anderson at all hauser i don't know he might be able to get you 13 to 16 dk points here against cincinnati but cincinnati actually some of these guys have been hitting pretty well recently now it's not in the great american small park it's in milwaukee but I still, I think he's maybe my second favorite pitcher, but I really can't say I really love anybody in the cheap range besides uh, Flaherty today. So Cincinnati is uh, probably the favorite cheap stack here. They've just been really producing recently. Uh, I know like Indy is up to 5-3, so like I'd probably leave him out of the cheapness, but um, you know, Flaherty at 3K is definitely decent. Frito leading off at 2-7. 
uh, Farmer 4K. It's getting a little bit pricey, but there's there's some cheap pieces here that you can throw in your stack. And the Brewers, I think, are my second favorite stack of the day here, but they're super hard with their expenses to get in there. So I'd probably take Yellis, Adamus, Tellus, start there. Renfro is like way up at 5-2 there. So I think I dropped him against um, right, even though Anderson has probably been with more neutral splits than anything. So Renfro is stuff in play. Wong, if he's back in the lineup with his knee issue, Urias might take um, being over him, but Urias is more expensive. Go figure. Uh, Jace Peterson is a cheap guy at third base. Navarre is a catcher at 3-1. It's not bad. Um Ben Garrett Mitchell, if you just want to do like a wraparound stack there, uh, instead of playing with Grumfro, you could go like nine, one, two, three, um, skip Grumfro with four and, and five. So that works definitely for you also. Guardians in Minnesota, uh, Tristan McKenzie, Chris Archer. McKenzie, not super interested in here, but I think he's in the medium range. He makes sense. Just nine, five is just for a guy that's, um, it, like the strikeout upside is definitely there. Like he's, he's got some good times where he's gone through and actually thrown some good games, but let's just say recently he's been in the teens recently. He's been 15 DK points, 17 DK points, 12.5 DK points. He dropped the 40 against the white Sox, but then, you know, his other games, he had a couple, he had 130 and 140 in like the last 10 games. So everything else has been around like 14 or 15 DK points. And if you're paying 9.5, like I just, that's just not enough to get it done uh, against a Minnesota team that can hit pretty well. I know Bucks is not in the lineup, but this lineup has still been pretty solid. So McKenzie in the medium range, I think in GPPs works well, not going to play him probably in cash archer on the other side cleveland is just such a hard matchup they really haven't had much power or anything besides like maybe nailer on occasion and jrom so i think archer might be in play here but um again he he doesn't go deep in the games he's over the hill he's more of like a good pitcher like kind of like bartolo clone was like just a pitcher like a veteran that knows like to how to pitch and to just to be there as like probably the back end of the rotation starter for you, just to try to keep you in the game. I don't think he, he completely gets blown up. So like, you know, Cleveland is a definitely a GPP stack, but not one that I'm like super excited about, but uh, so Archer's just kind of neutral. So I think he's safe, but he doesn't have much upside there. Uh, Minnesota Twins as a stack. I think they fall into the cheap realm here if you look at them. Besides Korea at like 5 4, everybody else is pretty much in the 3K range here. And like I said, McKenzie has had his struggles. He's given up some, some runs here. Let's look here. He has given up two earned runs, two earned runs, three earned runs, two earned runs, two earned runs. So his last five, he's at least given up two earned runs. And he's given up at least one home run in four out of his last five starts and two in one of those. So. Um, you know, I, I'd be looking at like maybe um, Gordon or um, Miranda or Crea. Like, there's there's a lot of options here. It I wouldn't try to pick the home run. I would try. I, I'm okay taking Gordon as a one off if you need somebody who's like three K. It's got the split advantage and has some speed and power. But if you're playing the rest of the Twins, I'd probably be like stacking them and taking individual pieces. St. Louis and Pittsburgh, Flaherty and JT Brubaker. Flaherty, I like here. He did look decent in his first rehab start. He only went five innings, had some strikeouts, but like he's only six nine. You don't need that much from him. If he goes five innings and gets five strikeouts again here against Pittsburgh, perfectly fine with it. If he gets like 15 DK points and we're set, that's my SP2. I think I'm locking him in in almost all my contests. Um, like I said, maybe Archer, maybe Hauser, maybe even Brubaker on the other side here, but. Brubaker at 7 1. I just, I just rather play Flaherty against Pittsburgh because the St. Louis offense is decent. Now, it is in a pitching park, so that does help Brubaker. The wind is blowing in. It's only going to be like 71 and trailing off down into about the 50. So it is definitely bodes well for pitchers. So in extreme GPPs, or if you're doing 150 max, Brubaker definitely can be in your player pool as an SP2. Um, but in cash, I would not take him. I, I really like Flaherty. It's locking in. It's my SP2 in cash. Cardinals, I think, are my favorite GPP stack. Again, it's not great hitting weather here, but, um, you know, they've been a good team. They can put it together. They're a tier below some of the other ones I mentioned that can just, like, 
to crank it up there like the Houston Dodgers, Atlanta, um, Toronto, but they have had games where they've put up like football scores. So I don't think that's going to be tonight, but um, I definitely think they can put up some runs. So if you want to put them in a GPP and they get like five and it's a low scoring night across the rest of the um, games, then I think besides Coors Field, then I think you're in a good spot there. So speaking of course fields, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks and Colorado Rockies. We have 11.5 total here, 5.75 on each side. The wind's blowing in at eight miles per hour. It's going to be 51 degrees, so it's going to be a little bit cooler out there. But I still think against Madison Baumgartner and Jose Urania, who's like one of the worst pitchers in Major League Baseball on a Colorado team, I think it definitely I, Arizona side I love the most. There are um, – Take all the lefties here, Rojas, um, Marte, switch hitter, McCarthy, Walker's even fine against um, a righty here, Varchero, Carroll's doing good at the sixth spot, um, Alex Thompson has um, fallen down into the order, but kind of forgotten, but I still think he's got like nine, 10 point upside um, potentially here tonight. So the only one I don't like playing is Perdomo. Like I said, he's batting like 195 in the season at shortstop and he's just a good baseball player, but not really a good, um, and he's a rookie. So maybe, you know, eventually he'll start hitting, um, you know, maybe we'll give him some, more um hitting practice and spring training or something next year but he, he's been a, a solid like defensive player for them so that's i think why they keep him in the rotation or in the the starting lineup uh colorado on the other side looks like you know just de definitely like the righties here um i haven't played charlie blackman in, in years he's just like again just a good baseball player that's overpriced and not really relevant for dfs he might get a home run every so often or steal a base but his good days are behind him so looking at gritchick daza cron brenda rogers really like him here um especially at the fifth spot if some of these guys get on and do more opportunity for rbis toga's been decent too as um the first baseman in montero is on uh, third base so there's a lot of um potential plays on the Rockies too. So I think I'm going to probably in cash stack um, Arizona and Colorado and then try to figure out the pitchers that work with that. Uh, Dodgers and Padres, they have that hurricane or I don't know if they're called hurricanes in the um, on the West Coast, but whatever that whatever that tropical storm that's dumping like rain on the whole uh, California. They played through it last night. It, it was wet and miserable, but they got by. Again, it's looking at um, 78 degrees, with about 40% chance of rain. It looks like it's telling off later into the night so maybe a delay here but i think they get it um julio urias and blake snell i like urias here uh, i have him kind of down in the medium range just because san diego has such a potential powerful lineup but again i put them more in like st louis category here as like the second tier because i just really haven't seen the explosion as often as i have with a houston or atlanta or um toronto or, or like some of those other teams that have um, been good offensively the, and the Dodgers definitely fall into that um, category here also. So that's why I'm really weary about Blake Snell. I think um, he's GPP only if you're paying up for him 10, four against the Dodgers um, with weather being questionable. I, I think it's just very scary. I'd rather play the nine, three for your ass against um the San Diego team, even though they have a lot of power righties here and Soto hits lefties well. I think he's just had a phenomenal season and their bullpen's good. So I think that they'll, um, you know, he'll be able to have a, a strong outing, but I prefer, you know, probably your quality McKenzie or even like Kirby against um, that we're going to talk about in the next game over him. So he'd be probably fourth in line in medium range. And in nine three, I mean, they had to divide it somewhere. And most of the higher price guys are like ten k or nine five. So if he's if we had more people on the slate, he'd probably be in the higher range. So for your quality, so Dodger bats, I think they definitely make a GPP stack that I'm very interested in against Snell. Again, just watch the weather on this one. At least it's like eight forty. It's not like a ten oh five game, so we should be able to get the information. It's only like what an hour and 35 minutes after lock. So we should be have all the lineups before um, and kind of an idea if the game's going to play. And then San Diego wise, they would just be a leverage stack against uh, Urias. Final game we have is the Braves and Mariners. Max Freed and George Kirby, both decent pitchers. Uh, Freed, um, even though he's a lefty and there's a lot of right-handed power on Seattle, I think he's had a strong enough season that he can be in consideration for SP1. Like I said, I like Gossman in the matchup the most. Otani, um would probably be second and then freed would be third but um you know you, you get a nice little savings here on, on freed so uh well a couple hundred dollars at least 
Uh, Kirby on the other side, I don't know what to do with him. He's fallen down to like 70 pitchers. And we talked about Kirby and we talked about like some of the other young pitchers for Seattle that they're kind of maybe limiting their innings later in the season because they're probably gonna make the postseason. They didn't want too many mileage or too many, you know, too high of a pitch count on these arms. So I wouldn't be surprised if like Kirby, like they got the lead in the last one. I know the Braves are definitely a, a, a more um difficult opponent but i think he only went like three innings last time out so Kirby, let's see here so so he had a string of three straight games like 20 plus dk points but his pitch count has gone down from 94 to 85 to 79 they only threw 39 pitches last time out um you know he got seven points it was against cleveland they were up six uh he only earned like allowed like one earned run only like two strikeouts so i just he's definitely a boomer bust uvp option here because the braves are a hard uh matchup for him here but he can get some strikeouts against them definitely but like how long is he gonna go like eight two is not a bad price but if he only is going like three or four innings and he can only get like three or four strikeouts then he's not gonna pay himself off so it's it's a risk so don't completely cancel him out put him in the fade category just be very very cautious i think we want to watch um you know kirby and like you know what's going on with the seattle situation and detroit did the same thing last year around this time but it's for different reasons they just realized that they're out of it and they wanted to save their arms like manning and some of the other ones and uh, I think that Seattle wants to do the same thing, just knowing that they might be extended into the season going. And so they might add a plan for these young pitchers, not expecting to make the postseason, hoping to make the postseason. But now that they are, they're going to try to manage them more. So free, definitely in play. Kirby, be careful with. Braves, um, definitely a GPP stack like St. Louis and the Dodgers above them uh, because the Seattle bullpen's not bad behind Kirby. And then Seattle is my number one lever stack against free. So let's look at some builds to get you on the way for your Saturday here. So like I said, um, cash into Tick Osman. If you want Otani, that's fine. There should be enough in this build as you fill it in to get to there. Flaherty locking in his fast P2. Catcher, I'm probably going to punt. There's like three or four 2K guys that you can throw out there. Uh, Walker at first base, Marte or Rojas. Um, play one, I think you play Rojas at third if you want to there. Shortstop, I'm probably punting. I uh, really like that Texas guy there, Jong at, at 2K. And then just figure out McCarthy, Gritchick, Rochero, or Carroll. If you take Carroll, that opens up enough to like get up to Otani or another pitcher or to upgrade like your catcher or, or shortstop or another um, place there. Van Dulleting, Gossman, Walker, Rogers or Marte there. Play the own utility if you want to. Rojas, shortstop again, probably going to punt. Um, Gritchick, uh, McCarthy, um, and then fill it out. Try to fill it out with as many Rockies and um, Car or not Cardinals. That's a football team. Uh, Diamondbacks, Arizona players there. And again, you might need to take a one off for shortstop because there's really not a good shortstop um, option for either one of those teams. So GPP, I'm taking a freed. If you want to go McKenzie, that's fine also. But I said, like, if you want to take a chance on your quietie, that he's going to definitely, but I'm actually, I really want to stack the Angels here. So that's why I don't have him up there as an option. So, and Uris might fill it in there also. So uh, probably got punt, punt catcher again. So tell us Wong or Uris, whoever's in, if Wong is still injured. Young at third base here. Um, Alberto, Adamas, um, at shortstop and then Trout and Yelich. And then if you can get up to Renfro, that's fine. I'm probably going to play Flaherty as my SP2 here. Archer, potentially Brubaker, if you're going extreme GPP, uh, would work also. And then finally, FanDuel, Otani or Morton as your SP1 here. Telus, first base, right from row third. Uh, Damas, shortstop, Trout and Yelich in the outfield. And then fill in with um angels and uh Milwaukee. if you play a tiny you're going to need a one-off and actually uh it's pretty um you can play like Wong or fletcher at second base and actually have like get like a decent like three five three six outfielder um from another team take another take one of the arizona guys who might fit in there or another one-off that you that you want. Um, if you play Morton, I think you have a little bit more money too. 
Um, so that's how I'm doing my build. So as always, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Hit me up on Twitter at MegaRuler31. If you want more information on FSI DFS, check out our football package, our you know NASCAR packages out there. We still have um, still covering PGA, even though it's in the off season. Um, you know, NBA basketball is going to be coming up soon. Hockey is going to be coming up soon. There's just so many things that are, are going on. We have college football. So if you're interested in any of these things, just check out our pricing. It's, it's super, super competitive compared to some of the other offers out there. And, you know, we, we make these videos for you to try to help you also. So, you know, we're here to help not to try to make money. We just want you to be able to enjoy playing DFS and be able to stay in the game long term and not uh, go in and lose all your money and get frustrated and um, back out and lose you from this community. So appreciate you watching. Have a safe weekend. Mega Ruler 31. If this video helped you, please give us a like so more people can um know that uh, we're out here trying to help people, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel so you can see all the cool creative things that we're uh, doing and bringing to you free of charge on this channel. And I appreciate you watching again. Good luck, have a safe weekend, and we'll see you next time.